Craig here. Welcome to my kitchen and cooking with a drench. As you can see, I have a very small under-equipped kitchen, uh, but from here, what I'd like to do is share with you the meals that I enjoy preparing for myself and my family. Everything is done on a larger than normal scale, just purely that, so that I can meal prep and then freeze whatever I make so it's easier when I come home from work uh, just to defrost and heat food up. Um, I don't find it makes much difference, uh, so it works really well for me. All the recipes I use are very easily scaled up or scaled down, uh, as you like. And what I will also do, is I will put the recipes into the description so they're quite easy to find for you. As you can see, I don't have a cooker. So the way that I cook is I use my tower air fryer. I've also got a tower plug-in hob. This has made uh, timings a little bit different, uh, particularly with the hob, um, as it can sometimes be quite difficult to get that up to temperature. I also have a DeLonghi combo oven and microwave, which tends just to get used for heating um, or defrosting uh, items, but I do sometimes use it for baking and grilling, uh, just depending on the size. I will leave a link for all of these products in the description below. I know normally only food prep once a week, uh, usually on a Sunday. Uh, you will see that I will sometimes use frozen veg, which I have prepped. So I will stand and I'll, I'll, I'll prep things like carrots and onions. I don't prep all my veg and sometimes I do do it uh, from fresh. I have found that that doesn't make much of a difference to what I am cooking. I purely do it for ease and it helps speed things up. Hopefully you'll enjoy these videos. If you do, please like, share, subscribe. Obviously, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. Okay, this one's for me today. Um, as you read in the description, what I'm going to be making today is haggis bonbons. Uh, these are really quick, really easy, and really, really tasty. Right, before we get up and close and see what we're going to do, uh, what you will need is a haggis. Um, I've got a Simon Howie haggis here. Uh, it's about 450 grams. Uh, I think next time I found a lovely little butcher up in Angus, sort of north of Dundee, um, that sells fresh haggis, so I might try it from there uh, next time. Um, but Simon Harry is a nice haggis, and I've used it before, and it's really good for this. Uh, I've already prepared the other bits. You will need uh, plain flour. I've seasoned that with salt and pepper. Uh, you'll need one beaten egg to add into the haggis, uh, just so that it sticks together when we make the balls. Uh, you'll need another two eggs, again beaten uh, in a bowl. I've added the salt and the pepper uh, to season those as well. And then finally the breadcrumbs. If you want to make the breadcrumbs, knock yourself out. Um, I can't be bothered doing that, so I just buy the breadcrumbs and then I season it myself. Uh, I haven't put any extra salt in it, uh, but there's pepper uh, and I've put a bit of chilies in as well, or chili, uh, dried chili flakes as well. At this stage, what you can do, if you want, is you can add Parmesan cheese to the breadcrumbs as well, so that will melt nicely when they cook. I'm not a big fan of cheese, so I am not going to add that. Okay, so as I can see, everything is uh, up and ready to go. So let's come in close and see how we are going to do this. Uh, up nice and close. Right, uh, let me just get my watch off because uh, we're going to get our hands in here in a second. Right, first thing we need to do 
let's put this haggis out and into the bowl. Um, I took this out of the fridge about an hour ago. Uh, it eat much easier to break up once it is um, a little bit warmer. So what we need to do, we need to try and get it all out of the bag it is cooked in. Okay, it should come off nice and easily. So. Obviously, this is a plastic bag. This one is cooked in rather than the traditional. Um, again, the traditional uh, covering is just as easy to get off, uh, but not many places do that uh, now. Right, what we first need to do, we just need to get this all broken up into the little bits so that we can make it into our little round bonbon balls. You can make haggis from scratch. Something I've always tinkered with the idea of doing and never actually done. Um, I don't think it's something I ever will do either. Okay, so that's starting to break up nicely. And I say it doesn't work quite as well if you've uh, taking it straight out of the fridge. We just want to try and get it as broken up as possible. Let's get that there for a second. Right, so let's get this egg in now. What we need to do is we need to get really well mixed in. I haven't had added any flavorings or any seasoning to this as yet. All the seasonings are in the other portions for the coating. Right. What I'm going to do is I am going to get in and get in and dirty with my hands. Okay. Purely because we want this to be mixed in as much as possible. So you can see that. It is lovely. Um, I find this works much, much easier. And what we want to do is then just get that all mixed in and as you can see that's now sticking together nicely so that it's going to be nice and easy to coat okay right there you go lovely like that okay now we just have to make the little bon bon balls um, I haven't washed my hands yet because obviously what I'm going to do, I am going to be rolling these balls exactly like that. Uh, you want them to make them as round as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make them all now. Uh, put them onto the plate at the side. Move that to the front so you can actually see that a little bit better. Okay. So we're trying to make them all roughly the same size. those there now so we've got two four six eight ten twelve thirteen okay um one or two of them are as you can see were a little bit smaller than the others um you make them bigger you have less you make them smaller you have more uh but that's normally 10 to 15 i, I will normally get out of a haggis Right, so let me just get my hands washed before we start coating these. So back with you in a second. So we've got flour, we've got eggs, we've got our... Keep moving down a little bit. I did warn you my kitchen was small. Okay, and then I'm just going to put them straight 
straight onto the tray. Um, I'm going to put the tray over a plate just so that I don't get too much of a mess. So first thing is, let's get them into the flour. We can do quite a few at a time with this. Uh, we just want to get them all coated in the flour. Okay. That one's looking nice, excellent. Like I said, this flour has been um, seasoned with just with salt and pepper. Right, let's get them out of there into the egg. We want plenty of egg on those before we put them into the breadcrumbs. Okay, I always find the egg is a little bit harder to get coated up. Right, let's do two at a time. And as you can see, some of the flour does start coming off. Sure. Just got to make sure that they're fully coated in the egg so that the, uh, the breadcrumbs all stick to the outside. Yeah, just make sure there are no white bits showing on the... Okay, so again, breadcrumbs are all over. Move that alone, make sure you can see properly. want as big a coating as possible on these. Okay. Okay, right, that's those all done. However, I still have quite a bit of egg left over. So, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna start recoating them, okay? Now, what that's gonna do, you're gonna get a much thicker layer of breadcrumbs. Um, I always have loads of uh, flour left over because I always make too much of that. Um, I didn't have a huge amount of uh, breadcrumbs left, so I, I, I used all the stuff that I normally have. But, like I said, I have loads and loads of uh, egg, which is quite unusual. So what I'm going to do, if we run them through again, I'll leave some not gone through again, okay? Just so that you can see the difference between the two. I'll cut them to, to both of those once they are cooked. They don't take any longer to cook, okay? Um, but it just gives them a, just a really big, thick, crispy coating. Um, and I do do it like that with the, the, the double coating whenever I can, because it is, it, it does make quite a big difference to it. Um, so let's get, I have to remember which ones are done, which ones are not. Okay. Okay, 
that's us good to go. I've got five done with the extra coating. Um, let me just get everything cleared away, um, tidy down, wash my hands, and then we can get these into the oven. Okay, so now to the cooking. You can deep fry these. Um, only takes three to four minutes when you deep fry them. They come out really, really crispy, really, really nice, very, very quickly. Um, I just can't be bothered with the hassle of getting the uh, deep fat fryer set up uh, and then tidying it all away. So this way works just as well. Um, and everything I'm doing is based around uh, an air fryer and a plug-in hob. Okay, now, all we need to do, we need to get these on at 180 degrees um, for 20 minutes. Should be plenty of time, obviously, depending on your air fryer. After 10 minutes, I will come and I will swap them around. Um, just make sure that they uh, turn them over, make sure they're, they're, they're being cooked all the way through properly. Um, again, it's going to be middle of the oven. Let's get that started. Get this thing out of the way. Um, and like I said, after 10 minutes, I will, will come and have a little look, see how those things are, the haggis bonbons are getting on. Okay, so there's the first 10 minutes up. So let's get these out. Oh, you can. You do that that starts again because this is a this air fryer uh, the clock stops when the door is open and it'll only start again when you shut the door again Ooh, these are looking so good maybe a little bit on the big side but guess what I am still gonna eat them all Right, so let's get those back in for the last 10 minutes. I cannot wait to try these out. Okay, so once this 10 minutes is up, back we come and we will get that tasted. Okay, we're well into the last minute of these. The smell coming from the kitchen is absolutely delightful. Um, I've already got the, uh, the fork and knife out ready to taste these. I uh, can't wait. Um, there we go. Okay, so let's get these out of there. Ooh, some of them have started to split, but that is not an issue at all. Oh, look at that. They are a fantastic color. Um, like I said, the smell is phenomenal. It is a, a, such a lovely smell. Okay, so let's just move this round a little bit so we can actually get some of these tried. I'm probably without burning myself. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try one of these big ones. Okay. Um, they are a little bit on the too big side. I'll take one of the little small ones from the back. So the big one has got the double coating of breadcrumbs, but we'll do the little one first. So, oh, look at that. Oh, and the smell just got so much better. So let's have a little taste of that. Mmm. That is so good. Okay. Nice and crispy on the outside, lovely juicy haggis on the inside. And a little kick of chili afterwards. Mm. Mm. Right, so you can see the coating is much, much thicker around the outside than it is on that one. Okay. Let's have a little taste of this one. Mm. 
That is so good. Right, that's me done for today. Leave any comments, like, subscribe, uh, you know all the things you need to do, and I will see you next time.